Weekend Update with Colin Jost and Michael Che. Welcome to Weekend Update on MSNBC. I'm Michael Che. And I'm Colin Jost, and we are live in Cleveland for the Republican National Convention. Or as I've been calling it, White Rio. I saw it. This looks like a Gary Busey lookalike contest. I can't tell the difference. Except Gary Busey is maybe more level-headed. We're also right next to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is where you'll find all the legendary artists who won't let Republicans use their music. <laughs> uh, just for those of you joining us, Mike Pence just finished speaking, and you can still feel the electricity in the room. Static electricity, <laughs> created by all the shoes softly shuffling towards the exit. Now, Michael, what was your takeaway so far from the convention? Oh, I got to say, it was all those Trump celebrities. Boy, did he bring out the heavy hitters. Yeah, I mean, slugs. Scott Baio. Got him. Antonio Sabato Jr. Couldn't get senior. One of the Duck Dynasty dudes. Probably the best one. I mean, get this, they were all available. What? All their schedules lined up? What are the odds that they all got the same day off? Crazy. Look, it's no one to Trump's not raising any money. Look at his friends. Scott <laughs> Bale still owes me $15 from 1994 when he bet me his gravy train would never end, and it did in 1995. I, Trump says he wants the best and the brightest. I honestly worry that Trump thinks Bale and Sabato are Spanish for best and brightest. <laughs> Scott Bale mentioned that the country's going in the wrong direction. Uh, yeah. Because back in the other direction, you still had a TV show. And in this direction, you owe me $15, Scott Bayo. I thought Trump's whole point is that he's trying to deport people named Chachi. <laughs> I mean, Donald Trump is one of two final candidates to be the president of the United States. And he picks the celebrities to vouch for him is Scott Bayo and Antonio Sabato Jr. I mean, if this was the season finale of The Apprentice, he would have fired himself. However, I will point out that the celebrities were somehow more reasonable in their rhetoric than the politicians. Like, let's check out this moment from former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani. There is just America! What happened to it? Nothing unites people like screaming at them. It sounded like his cable went out in the middle of Price is Right. <laughs> what happened to it? But at least he was able to showcase some of his signature moves. This is a man with a big heart who loves people, all people, from the top to the bottom, from the middle to the side. <laughs> he only got one out of four directions right. He might be great on security, but he is terrible at the Macarena. That's what happens when you let the Yang Yang twins write your speeches for you. <laughs> to the window! <laughs> Yang Yang twins is also, by the way, what Trump calls the leaders of North and South Korea. And then Chris Christie did some light crowd work. Let's take a look at that. What's your verdict? Guilty or not guilty? He sounds like a cop warning kids about stranger danger. I mean, and who better to give a lecture about ethics and corruption than the governor of friggin' New Jersey? Also, this is a guy who could realistically be our next attorney general. So this is a sense of, like, what his justice system would be like. He just yells, you think she's guilty? And everyone's like, yeah, take her away! But Christie, you know, I don't know if many people pointed this out, Christie actually plagiarized part of his speech from the Salem witch trials. <laughs> Not pointing that out. Speaking of which, obviously the biggest story of the week was Melania Trump's speech on Monday. And I gotta say, she really knocked it out of the park mm -hmm. before a strong wind blew it back into the stadium for an easy out. That's right, she was accused of straight up jacking Michelle Obama's speech. And she initially denied it. But their denial of plagiarism was the exact definition of plagiarism. They're like, we didn't plagiarize it, we just copied it. We just copy what she wrote, pass it off as our own, and plagiarism is a made-up word anyway, and I should know, because I made it up. And then we got uh, Ben Carson. Dr. Carson was back, and he tried to link Hillary Clinton to Lucifer. And Lucifer was in hell, like, whoa, wait, hold on. Hillary Clinton? Never met her. I, I know a Bill Clinton. Never mentioned he had a wife. <laughs> Ted Cruz, of course, the big story, just spoke about an hour ago, and he was booed off stage after refusing to endorse Trump 
and saying, vote your conscience. <laughs> That's where we're at now. People are booing the idea of listening to your conscience. <laughs> it's like if Jiminy Cricket showed up and was like, always let your conscience be your guide. And everyone in the crowd was like, ah, Cricket, kill it. <laughs> I, I just don't understand why Ted Cruz would show up to this convention and not endorse Donald Trump. That's like giving a desperate toast at your, wex, at your ex's wedding. I mean, get over it, dude. She's marrying the rich armage guy, man. Move on with your life. Sign up for Soul Cycle class. Lose all that soup weight you've been putting on. Go to the Caribbean. Find a hot young country. Sew a $100 bill in your drawers. Have some fun, man. <laughs> what? Like in the movies, you know. What, what movie is that from? Porn. <laughs> All the porns. Now, of course, we haven't just been covering politics here. We've also been having some fun. Uh, and we've also, Michael, I understand you were out there and you were kind of having fun with a new app. Yeah, that's true. I'm kind of obsessed with it, man. I've been yeah. running into people all the time. Take a look. I made a video. I'm Michael Chase, standing on the floor of the Republican National Convention playing America's hottest new mobile app where you got to catch the rarest creature of them all minorities at the RNC. It's called Trumpy Mon Go. So, as Trump would always say, let's round up some brown people. Catch him all, get him out of here. Man, there's no black people here? Oh, damn, my bad. You gotta catch them all. You see any rare minorities around? Um... I mean, you know, not obvious stuff. I caught a couple of black ones, but you don't... I've seen a, um, some... I guess Hawaiians. Did you see any rare minorities? Everybody wants to keep their Trumpy minds to themselves, but I'm gonna catch them. This Amish dude isn't a minority. Oh, I found a cow, bro. Yes, I know. You're Jay Farrell. Trumpy Mon! <laughs> Are you playing Trumpy Mon right now? What? No, I was just uh, I was trying to find Tiffany Trump on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> well, last week. You're in so a weird. <laughs> you are so weird. <laughs> Last week, in a break with traditional legal decorum, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg harshly criticized Donald Trump, calling him a faker and saying that she couldn't imagine what it would be like if he became president. Here now to comment, we have a very special guest, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Woo! <laughs> RBG! Live in the queue, RNC represent your on notice. <laughs> Let me out, Colin. Let me out. Let wow. You are coming out strong, Justice. Yeah, well, I don't know any other way, Colin. Trump picked a fight with the wrong 15 pound, 200 year old marionette, baby. <laughs> you know, I've been doing CrossFit. You've been doing CrossFit? Oh, yeah. When I, that's when I cross my arms and legs and try to fit inside a soup can. <laughs> Happens every time. Yeah. Now, now, in response to your comments, Trump tweeted out that, quote, your mind is shot. Oh, please. That's like the pot calling the kettle black. And I should know, I live inside a kettle. <laughs> Wait, like Tinkerbell? Yeah, yeah, it's actually her place. Uh, she's airbnb in it while she looks for a Planned Parenthood in Indiana. It's gonna be a while. <laughs> oh, my God. You got, like, Ant-Man strength. Yeah. <laughs> that poor redder. I mean, look, look. If my mind is shot, then Donald Trump's mind is shot, stabbed, strangled, put in a vat of wet cement and dumped in the Gowanus Canal. His mind is sleeping with the fishes, but it's waking up up to a Ginsburn. <laughs> yeah. yeah, get it. 
I did. But Justice, <laughs> Justice Ginsburg, yeah. you did come forward after that, and you admitted that maybe you had gone too far. Yeah, of course I went too far. I have no sense of perspective. Yeah. I'm like a flea. I can jump 40 times my own height. <laughs> also, you're never going to get rid of me. I wrote here on a dog, Colin. Yeah. You, wrote, you wrote here on a dog? Yeah, his name's Mike Pence. <laughs> and he just got Ginsburg. Wow. That was, that was a nice sneak attack. You're really, you're really hitting everyone. Yeah, no one escapes. I have to. I don't know how much time I got left, Colin. I, I got to get my pokes in while I got a chance. Now you guys are still, you guys are still. Hey, above the above the desk, Justice. All right, all right. Look, I don't know if you saw. Uh, I know you guys are still one justice down, uh, but there's been some speculation that after Chris Christie's speech, that some people are saying Trump might appoint him to the Supreme Court. Chris Christie on the Supreme Court? Please, I'd rather have an empty chair than a broken chair. And that's a Gambar. No dance, I'm tired. Oh, you're tired. Okay. No. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Conserve energy. Now, what about Merrick Garland? Mm. Merrick Garland. Yeah. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> Merrick Garland's like a Supreme Court with only eight judges. Hung! And that's a sexy slow burn. <laughs> Justice. What? Hey, hey, Justice. Justice. Justice Gimberg. Hey, burn me. Burn me. I don't got time for you, Don Lemon. I gotta catch a dog to fill it. <laughs> it's a literal greyhound. You're taking a dog to Philly. Yeah, that's how I go. <laughs> Ruth Bader Ginsburg, everyone, for Weekend Update. I'm Colin Jost. Hey.